This engine is a huge chance for the shipping industry to clean up its act. For years, the industry has searched for a cure, a fuel that could carry its weight without poisoning the air. Now, a new candidate has appeared. It is strange, dangerous, and full of promise. But is this really the silver bullet the oceans are waiting for? Behind the roar of engines and the endless trade routes lies a hidden truth. Shipping may seem silent, but it is one of the planet's loudest polluters. And the future of this vast industry may rest on a molecule few have ever thought about. Ammonia. A fuel without carbon. A gamble without certainty. The weight of the shipping problem. Every corner of the modern world depends on ships. Almost 90% of global trade travels by sea, carried in containers stacked like silent towers on steel giants. It feels distant, out of sight for most of us. Yet every product in our homes, every meal on our tables, has probably crossed an ocean before reaching us. But there is a hidden cost to this silent network. Ships run on heavy fuel oil, one of the dirtiest forms of energy ever used. Each voyage leaves a thick, invisible trail of carbon and toxic gases spreading across the sky. Today, shipping alone produces about 3% of all greenhouse emissions. That might sound small, but the industry is growing. By mid-century, it could rise to 10%. A single sector, larger than aviation, larger than most nations. The oceans feel endless, but their ability to absorb our damage is not. The scale of the problem is staggering. If the world wants to cut emissions fast, this massive industry cannot remain in the shadows any longer. Ammonia, a strange candidate. The search for a cleaner fuel has led to surprising places. Among them is ammonia, a substance most people connect with household cleaners or the sharp smell of sweat. Chemically, it is simple. One nitrogen atom bound to three hydrogen atoms. What it does not contain is carbon. That absence changes everything. When burned, ammonia does not release carbon dioxide. That makes it different from fuels like methanol, which still require capturing and storing carbon to remain neutral. Removing that step could make ammonia cheaper and easier to scale. Some studies even suggest it could dominate the fuel market for shipping by 2050, reaching as much as half of all supply. On paper, the promise is dazzling. A fuel that powers ships without adding to global warming. Yet, as with every solution, there are shadows. Engines must be redesigned. Safety remains a challenge, and producing ammonia sustainably is a problem of its own. Before the oceans are saved, the questions around this fuel must first be answered. Inside the monster engine. To see if ammonia can truly work, you have to look inside the machines built to burn it. In Denmark, at the research halls of man, engineers are testing something few have ever seen. An ammonia engine designed for the largest ships on Earth. At first glance, it looks less like a machine and more like part of a building. The cylinders alone are half a meter wide, towering higher than most people. When finished, the entire structure will be as big as a family house and strong enough to produce thousands of horsepower. But the scale is not the only thing that stands out. Ammonia behaves very differently from diesel. Its energy content is lower, which means the fuel injectors must be larger and stronger than before. Getting enough ammonia into each cylinder is a design challenge in itself. And then comes the ignition problem. Ammonia does not easily catch fire. Engineers use a small amount of pilot fuel, often diesel, to spark the process and keep the flame alive. Without that push, the engine would simply not run. Combustion challenges and emissions. Even once ammonia is burning, the challenges don't end. Its flames move slowly, 
far slower than traditional marine fuels. This sluggish burn changes the rhythm inside the cylinder. Water vapor and nitrogen are produced, and both of these cool the fire, dragging the process down even more. That slower burn opens the door to dangerous byproducts. The most concerning are nitrogen oxides and nitrous oxide. Their names sound similar, but their effects are very different. Nitrous oxide is a greenhouse gas hundreds of times stronger than carbon dioxide. Nitrogen oxides, on the other hand, are toxic to breathe. In tests, engineers have been watching closely. More than 30 sensors capture every detail of the exhaust. The good news is that, compared to engines running on heavy oil, emissions are much lower, by as much as 90% in some cases. Still, the work is unfinished. Reducing or eliminating these harmful byproducts is essential. Without solving this, the promise of ammonia risks turning into a new kind of environmental trap. Fixing the emissions puzzle. The fight against these unwanted gases happens on two fronts. Inside the engine, engineers adjust how the fuel burns. They can shift the timing of the ignition, change the pressure inside the cylinder, or raise the temperature to keep nitrous oxide from forming. Each adjustment is like turning a hidden dial, trying to find the balance where the flame burns clean. But nitrogen oxides demand another solution. For them, the exhaust must pass through a special device called a catalytic reactor. It looks like a honeycomb of metal channels. As the gases move through, chemical reactions break them apart into harmless nitrogen and water. In cars, ammonia is added to make this process work. In these engines, leftover ammonia from combustion is already there, feeding the reaction. When the ship runs at full speed, this system is effective. But when engines slow down, temperatures drop. The reactor loses efficiency and more pollutants escape. This uncertainty recalls past mistakes with LNG ships, where hidden methane leaks erased much of their climate benefit. Trust depends on transparency and on hard data. The reality of ship design. Engines are only one part of the challenge. The ships themselves must also change. Ammonia carries less energy than marine diesel. So far, more of it is needed to travel the same distance. That means bigger fuel tanks, sometimes more than double the size. On a large container vessel, this can make a huge difference. A ship that once needed 8,000 cubic meters of oil could now require 20,000 cubic meters of ammonia. The extra space has to come from somewhere, and in many cases, it means fewer containers. For one design study, the trade-off was more than a thousand boxes lost. That is a serious cut in revenue. Then there is the matter of safety. Ammonia is toxic and able to harm or even kill if leaked. Extra tanks, ventilation systems, and recapture units must be built in to keep crews safe. Every new safeguard takes money and space. Each adjustment chips away at the efficiency, reminding us that no solution comes without sacrifice. The price of going green. Switching fuels is never just a technical decision. It is also an economic one. Ammonia, even if made with renewable power, is projected to cost three to three and a half times more than the heavy oils ships use today. For an industry that runs on tight margins, that is a steep climb. Yet, when compared with other clean fuel options, ammonia looks less expensive. Methanol, for example, requires capturing carbon during combustion to remain climate neutral. That step adds high costs. Ammonia avoids that entirely, since no carbon is released when it burns. But the price is not only in the fuel itself. Ships must be redesigned, storage expanded, and sand safety systems reinforced. Each measure adds more to the bill. The question becomes, who will bear the cost? Ship owners, 
cargo customers or consumers around the world. Cleaner oceans may come with higher prices on store shelves, tying every person on land to the choices made at sea. The Green Ammonia Gap Even if ammonia engines work perfectly, another challenge waits at the starting line, making the fuel itself. Most of the ammonia produced today is not clean. It is created from natural gas, releasing more carbon during production than traditional ship fuel. Burning it may look clean at sea, but the pollution has already been released on land. This gray ammonia is no solution. To cut emissions, ammonia must be made using renewable energy. The process is straightforward in theory. Water is split into hydrogen and oxygen through electrolysis, powered by wind or solar. Nitrogen is captured from the air. The two are combined through the Haber-Bosch method, creating ammonia. But behind this simple formula is a massive energy demand. Experts believe that by 2050, global shipping will require six to 900 million tons of green ammonia every year. To reach that scale, electrolyzers, the machines that make hydrogen, must expand thousands of times over. Current global capacity is only a fraction of what is needed. Instead of a few hundred megawatts, the world would need around 2,000 gigawatts. The gap is staggering. Reaching that goal will cost hundreds of billions of dollars. Investors will only take the risk if they know demand is guaranteed. Long-term contracts, strict regulations, or strong incentives must be in place. Without them, production will stall. There is also the question of where the fuel should be made. Countries like Chile, Morocco, and Namibia have the sun and wind to power green ammonia plants, but their energy is also needed at home. Choosing between export and local development could spark new tensions. The promise of green shipping depends not only on science, but on politics and priorities across the globe. Ammonia offers a vision of ships crossing oceans without leaving carbon in their wake. Yet the path to that future is uncertain. Engines must be perfected, safety secured, production scaled, and trust earned through transparency. The industry stands at a crossroads. Continue with fuels that harm the planet or take the risk of building something new. The choice is heavy and the clock is ticking. Whether ammonia becomes the savior of the seas or another unrealized promise will depend on decisions made now. Decisions that will shape the oceans for generations still to come.